continue to pray over all of our family members. And I was talking to, this was Amy at the end of the last service. And think of all these things we talked about the fact that their faces, they are people for the Lord for us. We see a whole lot of names except for maybe. <coughs> and can you imagine that every person on these lists is standing together in this sanctuary? Amen. Amen. We have been uh, the last four, is it four Sundays now? The last four Sundays we've been standing on the promises of God's word, which are yes and amen in Christ. And uh, the promise that we have been praying and believing and uh, standing on is the promise that our households can be saved. Amen. Amen. That every member of our families can come to Jesus. And uh, we're praying even in this Christmas season, even this year, and there, there is only, what have we got, 13 days left of this, of this year? Right, it's the 18th? There are 31 days? That in the next 13 days, your family can be saved. That son or daughter can be saved. That brother or sister, mom or dad can come to know Jesus. And we, we've been praying and claiming these family members uh, to be saved, to, to come and receive the greatest gift, God's unspeakable, indescribable gift. Amen. Amen. At Christmas. Amen. And uh, so we're going to pray again today. Pastor Larry is going to lead us. And uh, so if you've uh, included uh, family members on this stack of Never paper, that. Right, representing hundreds of names, uh, let's stand together. I know you can stand, but let's stand together and let's agree together. We're going to pray a prayer of faith again that God by His Spirit is at work even beyond what we can see with the natural eye and bringing people to your family. In Jesus' name, let's pray. I invite you to reach out and symbolically all, all lay hands on this, uh, this bottle of Jesus. Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord. Lord, that you are such an incredible, loving God that you don't want any to be lost. You want all to come That's to that right. saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus right. Christ. And you want all of us to share eternity with you. And Lord, we thank you and we continue to claim that promise of salvation over our families, each and every one. Every person named on these lists will come to know you, Lord. Lord, that all will enjoy eternity with you. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. Lord, because we know that your desire for them to come to that saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ is even greater than ours. And Lord, we trust and what your word says. We trust in your promises. And Lord, we look forward to the day when all of our family members know you. Lord, we look forward to the praise reports as they come flowing in of people coming to you. Lord, we thank you for being able to share that praise report with Zachary this morning. Lord, we know that that is one, the first one of hundreds, Lord, that we will hear. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. All the glory goes to you, Lord. Lord, you are such an incredible God, Lord. Lord, that you sent your Son. And Lord Jesus, you did it all for everyone named here, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you. And God's people said, Amen. 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 You can be seated. <coughs> Well, we had reading this morning about uh, the fourth candle, the angel candle, and uh, we want to look at uh, the Christmas story again and be encouraged and challenged. Uh, how many know that in the ongoing ministry of God's grace until Jesus comes again we're, we're all a part of the Christmas story 
I'll explain that a little further. But, uh, we keep the Christmas story alive until uh, the Christmas story of his first coming until he comes at a second coming. Uh, angels. The angels are a very significant, important part of uh, Christ's coming, the advent of his birth, uh, the invasion of God to this planet. And uh, angels have always had a significant part to play in declaring the message of God. And uh, so it's, it's not... Uh, it's not surprising as we read the Gospels and the, the account of Christ's coming that angels had a very strategic and, and important part to play. Of course, it starts with, uh, I won't get you to turn there, but Matthew's Gospel, uh, where we have the, the record of the angel Gabriel uh, coming to Mary as a young woman and declaring that she is to be the, the chosen one, the highly favored one, with, uh, with which God would uh, send his one and only son through uh, Mary's womb to be born as the Savior. And so that angelic messenger, Gabriel, comes in and uh, greets Mary with these wonderful uh, tidings and, and this incredible message and of course it, it overwhelmed Mary as a young woman who uh, has not been married and has not known a man and she she asks at uh, this great declaration how can this be and the angel gives her this wonderful explanation that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the, the power of the highest will overshadow you and that thing which is born of you will be the very Son of God. And she rejoices at the word and receives in faith, declaring, Be it unto me according to your word. And, and we, we see uh, throughout this story, starting there, but uh, the angel in a dream came to Joseph and said, Listen, don't be afraid to take Mary. Uh, although she's only your, your engaged spouse right now, your fiancé, as it were, don't be afraid to take her, for, because that which is uh, born of her is, is of the Holy Ghost. And, and so Mary, uh, Joseph responded to the angel. And, and then what we're going to read today, of course, uh, has some great insight to the, the angelic uh, invasion here surrounding Christ's coming and His birth. And, uh, and the message that they, that they shared, and one which we need to share. And then we read later on in Matthew's Gospel that after the birth of Christ, the angels were still busy, and uh, Joseph was warm, warned uh, by angelic messenger in a dream to take this young child now and, and flee to Egypt because of Herod and his desire to wipe out this newborn king. There's always been this strategic part of, of uh, the angels in this Christmas story. Turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. We read some of this last week, but I'm going to read again. We'll start right at verse 1 because it's such a wonderful passage to read at this Christmas season. And we're going to read uh, right down to verse 20. Uh, if you need a Bible, just uh, raise your hand high. We do have... Uh, copies here for you if you need one. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Luke chapter 2, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria, and so all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round around them, and they were greatly afraid. I think you would have been too. Yeah. 
Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger or a feeding trough. And suddenly there was with that single angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will towards men. Suddenly silent night wasn't so silent anymore. And so it was when the angels had gone away from them, the shepherds, into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known this saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Angels. The angels' message that night, that first Christmas night, that angelic messenger known and identified in other scriptures as Gabriel, came to these shepherds as they were in their field uh, at night, dark, no street lights, no flashlights, maybe the, the warm, subtle glow of a campfire off in the distance. And in the darkness of that moment, in the quietness of, of that scene, this angel shows up. I would imagine that that brought a little bit of a startling effect to, to the shepherds in that field that night. Angels, uh, I don't imagine, are small little tiny creatures. Uh, a gentleman that uh, I knew a number of years ago uh, on many different occasions uh, has seen angels. The Lord has opened his eyes to see on a few different occasions, not daily and not regularly, but on occasion he has seen angels. And uh, he says that the shortest angel he has ever seen is, was about eight foot tall. <laughs> and uh, and I, I would imagine that the sight of Gabriel showing up unannounced in the, the midst of that darkness was rather startling. And this angelic messenger picks on some plain old ordinary folk, shepherds. I don't know about you, but I think I qualify as a plain old ordinary folk. <laughs> How about you? He didn't come to, the, the angel didn't come to a palace. He didn't go to the CNN News Bureau. He didn't go to CTV News. He didn't go to the Sanhedrin Council in the capital of Jerusalem. The angel came to announce the greatest advent, the greatest event of human history up to that point. And the angel came to some lowly, plain old ordinary, probably a little bit smelly, tired, sleepy shepherds in a field outside Bethlehem. And the angelic messenger declared, this incredible message that has now rung through the centuries, down through time, to the ends of the earth, this beautiful message. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy for all people. For unto you is born this day a Savior, Christ the Lord. And with that message from Gabriel that a Savior was born, uh, to this earth, for this earth, for all people of all time and all generations, the gospel had its birth, its, 
it had, it, 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 the gospel message had its beginning through the angelic message to those shepherds. And immediately the shepherds uh, uh, responded, oh, I forgot to mention that, yeah, there was another little thing that happened. They, not only was there this, this individual angel, all of a sudden, wham, the lights go on. And, uh, and, and if you can just try to use your imagination, all of a sudden, there are a multitude of heavenly hosts. Hundreds, thousands, I don't know, tens of thousands, filling the night sky over that field and outside of Bethlehem, and they're singing glory to God. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward them. The angels are, I, I'm sure their world was rocked, you know, there. And after they picked themselves up the ground, off the ground, uh, they, they, they gather themselves and, and they respond. So they respond to this angelic message, this, this declaration of the message of the gospel, the message of the Savior. Oh, yes. Written before in, in, in generations before, we, we have the understanding of the Old Testament context of this. But now declared for the first time by angels that all of the, prof the prophetic writings and all of the prophecies that looked forward were now being fulfilled this very night in this town here outside. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ. The Messiah, the Anointed One, the one looked forward to for centuries, the one prophesied to and about, was now here. So we have the angel's message that declared the message that has now gone down through the centuries. There is a Savior. It's Christ the Lord. It's Jesus. Amen. And so the angel's message as we read on and we have the account of the shepherds responding to that message. By the way, it was an re immediate response. <coughs> when you get news like this, you've got to do something with it. And the angel or the shepherds said to one another as the angels departed from them and were gone into heaven, the shepherds said, let us now go. Let us now go. It's interesting that when they... When the, the heart of the gospel message comes, when the invitation uh, about the Savior is made known, a response is needed. Jesus, as we fast forward a little bit from this story, Jesus walks on the sea side of Galilee and he approaches a couple of guys repairing their nets. And, so, and, they, and he says to them, come, follow me. And I love the way the gospel records this. It's not there just by accident. I believe every word written is by design. And it says this, immediately. Immediately. They left their nets and their dad. And they followed him. Happened again. Not only with Peter and Andrew, but with James and John. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately. The shepherds had an immediate response to this gospel, to this declaration that the Savior was born. That Christ, the Lord, the Messiah, the Savior had come. Let us now go. Sheep? What sheep? Who cares about sheep? <laughs> the Savior has been born. When the message of salvation comes to you and to your family and to your household, it becomes the priority of your life. Let us now go and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And so they made haste, found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. Verse 17 gives their secondary response. Their immediate response was to go to the Savior. Their immediate response was to respond to the declaration, the, the gospel of the Savior being born. But as with them, 
uh, I believe so it is with us. But their second response was this, because the angel's message, it became the shepherd's message. The angel's message became the shepherd's message.